Willie Ann thought he was getting away with it He was after the golden glove by the way he was saving it There's no shame in it Marco Sovar tried to to the ref but he knew that he weren't changing it And he got a red card for his taking it It was a pen so you know who's taking it What? Willie Ann thought he was getting away with it He was after the golden glove by the way he was saving it There's no shame in it Marco Sovar tried to to the ref but he knew that he weren't changing it And he got a red card for his taking it It was a pen so you know who's taking it What? Yo, this is the OT99 Bantering where opinions are shared and smoke gets served. It's your boy Fans and I'm joined today by Edwin. And today we're going to talk about Manchester United's FA Cup victory against Fulham. Manchester United are through to the next round, the quarters. And you know what? We're marching on, man. It was an ugly victory, but we're marching on. But before I start, Edwin, what's going on with NK, bro? Bro, I don't know, man. No, so NK. Back, wasn't it? Seven mm. time out, man. He's seven time out. My, you know what? He's still suffering from that, that 7 0 beating. That 7 0 beating? Fam. Yeah, man. It rattled him, you know. You remember when, in the last vid when he was in his shades? <laughs> it's in his shades. Was it, <laughs> wait, what? He, well, I keep saying his best line. What did he say? If May United haven't turned up, neither am I. I think he, he took that literally. He's like, you know what? I ain't turned it up. <laughs> but I need to check up on this guy, seriously. I think he's only going to come back when, you know, if, if our team gets sold. If our team gets... and, he that gonna have... and he knows that good money's coming in. I think he'll return dead. Bro, I need to book a flight to save lot. You know what? It's going. It's good news with the sale. It looks like it's moving. You know, progressing. You get me. I'm hearing six yeah, billion. Yeah, they're making figures. the second bid this year and um, this week, isn't it? That's good news, man. Progress that, man. Progress it. But let's get back to the game. So Manchester United is fruit. It's fruit, and um. It's one of those games, Edwin. Again, where Man United fans are sitting there thinking. We got the W. Look, let's, be, let's, let, let's let's just say it straight. We didn't oh. deserve to go through. It looks like was it three one. We only what I'm I'm not I'm not happy with it because like they're celebrating over a win like they deserved it. They only went through because Fulham had three sending offs. Their, their manager got sent off. Their striker got sent off, and one of their attacking players in William got sent off. Mitrovic, William, and the, and the thing like it's not and they had us on the ropes a bit during that game. You know what I mean? Even like even even when we went one one year, we were still playing possession football. And I was looking at the team saying, "What are you doing? Like, it's one one. Attack them. They've got nine players, but yet we wanted to do this one touch for the defense and midfield. Like, you know, I'm gonna lie. We went through, but I'm not impressed. But don't you think then? Because to play the other side, so in my in my take of it, I'm looking at it like this. Look, is it that one? What you know? We've lost a few key injured guys. You know, like Ericsson, who's very, he's like, he's key for in terms of ball possession, control dictating, has that creativity. We've lost him. We're having to make shift guys and fit guys in. So Bits has only been, had about six odd games of that. We're trying to, you know, get him situated in the Premier League for the first time. All of these things are happening, right? Injuries, even though we haven't got a lot on paper, but it's just like that is significant for us because a lot of those guys would be first team players. Do you know what I mean? And we're having to try and, and manage it. And plus, Man United is playing the most amount of games. At, we're in fighting at all fronts. Like I read a stat the other day, um, yesterday, sorry, about Manchester United playing 25 matches in the space of 88 days. And if you deep it, if you look at those stats, and if you look at the the, the win draw loss ratio, Manchester United has really done like in those twenty five games. Man United's got a, a cup out of that, Carabao Cup. Do you know what I mean? It's not the biggest. It's not like to say it's a Champions League or Premier League. You get me? But we've the run that we've gone on. People would have assumed that it won't be as good as it is now. Do you know what I mean? Certain games that we've come through, obviously outside of that Liverpool hammering that we got you would look back and think okay oh, okay the question is yeah decent. are you no no are you happy with the win what against Fulham yeah yeah because it's a business end of the bro do you know what it is if you you can never ask me am I happy with a win and me say no because it's the business end of the oh, season who, 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 who we got in the next round right away Right and away, and that's going to be a hot bro I ain't going to lie if we I would played, be surprised if you look look if we, the way we played yeah Brighton will beat us Hundred look, hundred percent. If we played like we did against Fulham, Brighton is moving to us. Brighton has been a team that's been it's been very tricky to play against. Them, Brentford as well, been playing really well. And for me, we can't perform like that against them. We can't. We can't. 
And what worries me about that game against um, Brighton is well, because we're away from home. We've been getting luck of the draw. We've been playing at home in a lot of these cup competitions and stuff. But now we've got to go away from home. And it worries me. But I think the positive news will be that, you know, we may have, hopefully, fingers crossed, Ericsson back, fighting fit for that game. And I think uh, Casemiro's ban will be over by then as well. So we'll have him back as well. So we might see a situation where we've got our, sh our strongest midfield on paper playing against Brighton. So, you know what I mean? Anything's possible, man, when you've got your full squad Brent fighting fit. But um, yeah, man, you've got to be happy, Edwin, man. You've got to be happy about the wins. This is business. This is business end, bro. You've got to be happy. You know what I mean? Look, look it's good on paper, yeah, but I'm just talking about a performance. Like, we only went through because of them circumstances. You know what I mean? Like, it's So not where like did it change for you then? Where did it change for you? The game's transition for you in terms of we got our upper hand. I know it's it, it is. You you can answer that question, bro. For me, when, I think it. You know what? It, it changed when the ball was given to Sancho. He cut in, and the goal was open, and he shot, and then William blocked the ball. See, I don't see and it then, like that, bro. That's when the game changed. When I the red card that. happened, and then Mitrovic got sent off. Then they got then the. Um, Manager got sent off, and Bruno scored the penalty. That's when the change that whole scenario, collective of situation, changed the whole game. Because let's it, be honest, before before then, did we really look like we were going to score or win well, the game? They were, the, they were definitely the better team in the first half. I think David Gea made some key saves as well throughout that game. Willian's one being the most notable one. You know what I mean when he done that outstretched because yeah. Willian done that curler. I think David Gea in the first half saved that. If if, if header. Mitrovic just had her in the second half, you know what I mean? Yeah, Yeah. yeah. And I, I do feel like uh, Fulham played the better game, but I feel like I've seen this pattern of play from Manchester United all season. And that is this that, that, that element of where... So where it changed for me is where Eric Ten Hag in the second half made that, sub, that substitution where he brought on Anthony. And bringing on Anthony, yeah, him playing further out wide, hugging that line, being able to run at a defender, it caused a bit of trouble. Do you know what I mean? One time he got fouled when he tried to break away and the other time, do you know what I mean? Like he saw that opening space, he passed it on to um and Sancho. And for me, yeah, that's when I first got up off my seat and was just like, oh, like wait, wait, wait. That's when I got up off my seat. And um Sancho, I So what like do you wait, where do you think it changed? The substitution. You know, Eric's Eric's been doing this all season long where he's got uh, the most points. I think he's got the most you really uh, think Yeah, bro. You really you really you don't think it was a sending off? What the uh, it was a it's sending off William. What William? Yeah, yeah. According to the rules, it was as a, a sending off. Look, he done. No, no, no. Don't you think the game changed because of the sending off? Yeah, it changed because of the sending off. But I don't think it was lucky that that man got sent off because that sub led to that whole dramatic thing happening. I think people look at it and say, "Oh, he got I a know, red card." That's why. That sending off, a lot of that wouldn't have happened. That's what I'm trying to say. I know, but the reason why that sending off happened is because Sancho's goal was going in. Let's not get it twisted. He, he like he cut in. Left the defender shot. If you look at the replay, think, you see it going I in. And then giving, I think you're giving Ten Hag too much of credit for that bro, substitute. But... <laughs> like but you're trying to you're trying to find <laughs> well, I'm trying to find a silver lining in the cloud. Look, at the end of the day, that okay, do you know what? To be honest, we never know. He if that's all season happened, though, but Edwin, any, anything could have happened, we could have still won, even with that without that red card. But playing against nine men, that's if we had not won yet, the conversation we'll be having right now is different. Of like course. you know what I mean? we had to win yeah. and we had enough time to win it's not like there was two minutes where they could just put everyone behind the ball we had a good like 15 plus minutes do you know what it is i feel like manchester united in that game created their own luck where people say we got lucky because they went down it's got the red cards i feel like sancho popping off that shot is where it all happened look william could have let it go in not handball it yet handball it yet still have 11 men on the pitch and still be fighting for that victory for the simple fact that he leans into it with his hand, purposely blocks that shot. Bruv, blood rushed to your head. You're getting a red card. And subsequently, what happened to that was self-inflicted because Mitrovic couldn't hold his call. Cool. He gets a red card. Marco Silva gets a red card. And what I hate more than anything about these situations is that where's my team on it? And we'll talk about respectively for my players. Those bad things trickle over to the following games. You could have just left it as is. But those things trickle over to other games and then you're just like, oh, snap, now the impact of this is going to affect me here. Just like the whole Casemiro situation where he was playing Palace and then it affected us with Arsenal. 
And now they've got to deal with these red cards going into their like the next couple of games. And look, it was self-inflicted, Edwin. For me, I saw Sancho dup here, man. Bang. And you know what? If the if the scoreline was 1-1, I see Man United winning ugly, but nicking the game. And us saying, you know, it wasn't a nice game. Like we've been saying for a lot of the games recently, it wasn't a nice game, but we got the victory. We're doing that now. But I feel like I've got to give Eric Ten Hag props for bringing on Anthony, who was directly involved creating that issue. You bring him on in a bank. You got you got to respect you got to respect Eric Ten Hag because the fact is, yeah, you can call it luck where, like, you know, it just happens one off. But if you look at Eric Ten Hag's substitutions, yeah, a lot of the points and 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 and, and changes to the game that's happening from his resulting from his substitutions, especially in the second half. Is contributing us to us getting success on the pitch. So for me, you have to. It can't really. Is it luck, or is him decide? Is it him looking at the game in game management and identifying the issues and resolving? Bro, as I said, we never know. But look, that <laughs> nine men. So look, at the end of the day, look, we're through, but we got to step up our performance. You know what I mean? Like, just back to front. It wasn't. It wasn't really that effective. I know, I know, and I feel like I feel like um, I th we've seen we've seen the gaps in Manchester United's team. You know what I mean? When you don't have guys like Casemiro, it's pretty evident. When you don't have guys like Eriksen now, it's pretty evident. And Manchester United, as much as we've got to sort out the striker forward position, because again, like with Weghorst, um going forward and an attack sense, he wasn't offering much, but defensively. Um, and getting stuck and involved in play. I see him doing one-two link-up play. He was doing all right. It's just going forward as a striker is not helping us much. So as much as we need a new forward, I feel like we definitely need to sort out the midfield situation. And what's your thoughts on Maguire playing, man, Edwin, man? Because why Why is Lindelof is that, on the bench, but Maguire starting? Is that? Maguire? Who? Oh, that's what I'm saying. Like, man don't even know if... Who? who? <laughs> you know what? I just feel like... I don't know, man. Why like, is he starting, bro? Like, why wouldn't you play? It's just Shaw interesting, isn't it? Like, if, even the crew, even the 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 crowd were booing him because supposedly every time he had the ball, he was hogging onto it. That there's times he, he was he was just playing sideways. He just seems like he, as soon as he gets the ball, it looks like he's going to bullet mode. You know, bullet time mm. in the Matrix. Mm. They want everything to just go slow. Just slow motion, bro. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it's interesting why he didn't. Maybe he wanted someone. A bit more commanding to complement uh what in the air, in the air. Yeah. yeah so look i just day, i just get tired i just get tired of it because yeah you might have a decent game prior but i just, i really do i don't know in my mind i don't know if it's eric ten Hag. he's too consistent yeah and i don't know if he's if it's him thinking along the lines of your what you're thinking which you may be in terms of martinez might need in that aerial presence because i feel like he evaluates each team like each game by game and looks at the opposition um, but at the same time, I'm just like, is it because Maguire is captain and you're just trying to give Maguire minutes um, to keep him happy? Because as far as I'm concerned, we've got Luke Shaw that can play well, centre back. I'm gonna respectfully, if he's not happy, then he just has to get with the thing, you know. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, know. yeah. I don't know um, why Linda Hoff is on the bench. Maybe he's just seen that them two don't work together quite well. You know what I mean? Mm. Mm. Um, Do you know, it's it's a worry, man, because I've seen Martinez and Lindelof have decent games, and I just, yeah, I just don't know why Maguire keeps getting a looking. I really don't. I know he's going to be, it's likely that he's going to be going in the summer, but I just don't know why he keeps getting a looking. Um, Maybe you know. he's he knows some big games are coming, and he's just like, look, um, we can't have. Um, Maybe he's a bit worried about um, what's his name. Maybe he's worried about um well, Lindelof. Maybe he's just huh? Maybe he's maybe yeah, like I say, maybe he's worried about Lindelof. No, no, no. Maybe he's just worried about Varan. Like you put Varan there, he might, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's true though. Where was um Varan? Because he wasn't, he wasn't obviously he didn't play yesterday, and he wasn't in the substitute. Maybe, bench. maybe like, that's what I'm saying. Like, if he's not 100, percent you're looking like okay, maybe we need to rest him. Um, yeah. It's not. I don't remember hearing anything about him. I don't remember hearing anything about no. um, Varane 
you know, I missed it. If it was out, I missed it about him being injured or anything like that. So the quick and another thing is, uh, and there's plenty of time Bru between us and Newcastle. What do you think about Bruno? Bruno, um, look, with Bruno, he scored two goals, isn't it? He scored yeah. two goals. And that's the thing. How can I criticize the guy that scored two goals? Yeah, but um, was he playing well though? Come on, you're saying he scored two goals, but did he play well? That's the thing. So I feel like Man, uh, Man United, as a, we didn't play well. I don't think Man United. I don't think Bruno played well. I don't um, think he played well. He got yeah. two goals. So on paper, it looks like he had a good game. If you're just yeah. looking on that, one was a penalty, and one was one where we got caught. We caught them on a the counter, and uh, Fred passed it to him, and he and he blasted it in. Like you know what I mean? Like I feel like Bruno was doing more of the whole. Like he's a high risk taker, so he'll put in um, risky, risky, risky crosses, risky passes, and then when it doesn't come off, do you know what I mean? It looks like it's a lot of ball wastage. Obviously, he doesn't have the retention stuff, but it's always likely that Bruno will be on the on the involved in a goal somewhere. It's just it's just typical Bruno. But the thing about it, when you're playing Bruno, um, it invites a lot of pressure. To Manchester United's team, it invites a lot of pressure. And when you've got like um, no Casemiro or you've got no like DMs that are spatially aware of their surroundings or positionally aware um, to win back that ball or just intercept sort of balls that has been lost, then you're at huge risk. And I think Bruno Fernandes, as much as he's good going forward and helping our team, you know, get a goal or whatever like that or assist. He exposes us, man. He exposes us to them, them counter attacks, and um, mm. it's just it's going to be challenging to deal with. Oh, obviously, I saw Scott McTominay trying to do his thing, playing, trying to fill in for Casemiro and Sabitza, but they ain't Casemiro. Do you know what I mean? And, there's a bit, um, there's a, the problem is now there's a big difference, and we had this problem. Did we have this problem last year where there's, there's a major difference between the first team and the, the person that starts team. and the person that backs them up? Like it's big different time. if the levels drop so much. You know what I mean? Big time. Do you know? It's big time. I mean, I was happy that Sabitzer got his his goal. For example, talk about the midfield, especially yeah. when he was he allowed goal, to get he forward. Took his a bit goal more. really well. That was a really good goal. Yeah, he took it really well, man. That little back heel um, flick was a nice nice touch. It was fire. He got his goal. Um, and I just feel with Sabitzer. I know he's aggressive um, with it, but I just feel like he's more. Uh, it, it's looking like it when he, when he's allowed to go forward and express himself with a forward passing and stuff like that, getting forward, he's more effective than he is sort of defensively. And I think with Manchester United, how I'm seeing them is we need that cover, adequate cover. But when Casemiro's gone, do you know what I mean? Because Fred can't do it. Scott McTominay is just like you know. And so Bits is looking like his best attributes are going forward rather than defensively. So those are things that we need to address in the summer, man. Um, but you know what? Like I said, Manchester United is through to the next round. Look, Man United, bro. Edwin, like, Man United's in a good position, you know. We're through to the... What is it? We're through to the quarters of, of, of the FA Cup. Do you know what I mean? Europa League, look, we're there as well. Man United's third in the league. Like, what what more do you want for Manchester United right about now? Mm. Do you know what I mean? What what more could you say for Eric Hag's first season? What can you say? Look, Man United's got an opportunity to win two more cups and finish top on top four. You know, look, as I said, we'll see, man. Look, <laughs> because on on paper it shows that we're through to the next round. So yeah. Well done on them being there, but all I've got to say, we've got to step up the performance because um, it may have not gone that way, especially yeah. after that, after those sending offs. But look, maybe it was, it was just meant for us to go through because I was that was mad though. In that space of like four or five minutes, there, there was three sending offs, the manager and two players. And moment the of madness, moment of madness. Yeah, but I think that's it. We're in, is it the um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, F, um, FA Cup semis and um, Europa League quarters I think that's it but do you know what um, the end of the day I'd rather win ugly lift up these trophies than win um, you know play pretty football and, and get knocked out I mean obviously you'll want to do the both but the most important thing at this moment in time is us 
getting through to these net. We just need it. And it, if anything, it shows that we're, we're playing to the final whistle and we're showing heart, we're showing determination more than anything. And Man United have been lacking that. Do you know what I mean? Where we will crumble. Man United is always showing fight back. So I'm happy about that. Um, if if anything, if there's anything to be positive about, you know, and I feel like the, um, the good football, the style of football that we want will come, um, especially when we start getting the right personnel as well to come in and we start... Um, sort of making this team the bench and everyone look better but who was your man of the match Edwin? I mean, you know, you know. How have you not got a man of the match bro? Why are you mugging? Just because say his name bro. Play... You Who? just say his name bro. Just say Bruno. Say his name. No. <laughs> well, we've got two goals. So, just because you got you got a penalty and you, uh, a, a, a chance that you should have buried, bam! You got a score those. You have to score those. He could have skied it. You know, I've seen him. I've seen him miss open goals before. Who knows? I might even give it to Sancho, bro. Sancho. Start sparked off what happened, and then he was instrumental in the. The, the ball to Shaw to pass for Sabitza but I don't know because like even though we won our team didn't play well so it's either him or Bruno I'll give it to you yeah what about you I mean I gotta give it to um I think to be fair I think guys like um Shaw was okay so you know shout out to Wambi as well Martinez as always um and yeah Sancho had a decent game Anthony had an impact so I know a couple guys, but I think the main guy, look, I can't see a game like that where the team performed poorly and then you see someone like Bruno come in and score two goals, a penalty, and then, you know, rocket of a shot and not give it to him because, like I was saying earlier, like this is a game where it's it's about, we're in the season right now where it's about outcomes. And I'll take that over anything right now, do you know what I mean, to lift that trophy. So, you know what I mean, I have to give it to him because he got us over the line. But shout out to, to Sancho for start and, and Anthony for starting that that transition point. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, look, Manchester United onwards and upwards. You get me? City, it could be smoke season in the final right there. You get me? It could be smoke season in the FA Cup. You hope, you, you know hope. I mean? Europa League, he knows who we're going to get. But we have to get through Pasa Villa, who we've never beaten before, by the way. Mm. Um, so it's going to be a tough game. I can't even think about Juve or Sporting unless we get over that game but I have the faith in Eric that we will but guys thank you for joining us once again remember to like comment and subscribe and share your thoughts on what you thought of the game do you feel like we didn't deserve to go through do you feel like we created our own luck and we deserve to go through do you feel like it was following that pattern you know where we have one crap half then a good half I don't know but all I know is we can't perform like that against Brighton because if we do peak it's peak for us early trip early trip home but um yeah like share subscribe let us know your thoughts and until then peace peace